This is Ida and Jello. <laughs> they don't really like each other. We lo- we love London. I, I can't. You say, we you love say. London. <laughs> <laughs> we love London, but we want to escape London. Yeah. It definitely has to do mostly with cost. It's become quite a hard place to exist. I do think that there is uh, lots of opportunities. There is uh, liveliness to the city. London is great, but how much time do I spend like availing of like all the amazing stuff that's here? Not very much because I'm always sort of working. In London, you need like a support group. You need people around you who believes in your work. Yeah, London and community just like come together. Is that like separately? That it's a nightmare. The cup. What am I shaking? Nerves. Oh my, myself. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sinead O'Dwyer, I'm a fashion designer based in London. Hi, I'm Febin and I'm a designer based in London. I'm Emma. I'm Laura. And we're Chipova Luana. My name is Masha, Masha Chipova. I'm a fashion designer. I, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't think there was a particular moment for me when I realised that fashion was a thing for me. It kind of grew naturally. I grew up in Sweden and I felt like I didn't really you know, uh, belong and also, you know, my mother dressed very differently. So that kind of became like her tool of navigating herself in society. I kind of um, created that for myself too. I'm from the countryside and like my parents wouldn't necessarily have been like into fashion. Actually, my grandmother, um, she always knit. And she taught me to sew when I was really small, actually. Not really thinking of it as like a fashion related thing, but more like making craft, like as a hobby. I finished the yeah, in architecture in Ukraine. I started like working in architecture and I realized how it's like, it's so like static and very slow. I just felt like, like I changed my mind very fast and I just want to try a new thing. And I just, uh, and I just kind of like fashion came naturally. My mom was a big influence. She was worked in like creative fields and painted and loved clothes. When we met each other, we were both drawn to crafts and making, which kind of brought us together. Denim is like my really, really favorite thing. You can do so much with it. You don't buy fabric because you like the fabric and then you close with it. I use the fabric as a like empty canvas. I have rift overs of denim from this collection. Next collection could look completely different. Nobody would ever know that it's exactly the same fabric, but it is. This one is that my interns hate me the most for, because they have to like brush it <laughs> um, after it's done to make it fluffy. Obviously, when like Dua Lipa happened, I mean, it's just crazy. Like this butterfly top that existed in my collection, <laughs> it just became like like a main thing somehow after she wore this top. Like, until now, a year after, just everyone wants to buy this top. We feel like, I want to stop making it, like, I don't want it anymore. The new collection is about, like, driving really fast on the highway. So it's like, it's like inspired by, like, racing, but not really like the racing clothes, but more like the feeling. It meant to look like, like, you know, the oil spilled in the water and then, like, in a puddle. This is sort of like a flower print, very classical, but it looks like, you know, when they drive fast in the car and take a picture, it's like, smudged images. So yeah, it's always about like kind of translating the moods through but not being like very obvious. I don't own my own car, I don't, don't drive. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a beauty in it, just wanting something you don't have. I did also this like swirls in this car. You know, like when they like drive and like a drifting car in the circles and like there are marks of like this sort like, of donuts thing. So I have them on like garments and they're like stitched like that. I don't enjoy do like a technical drawing, sending it to the factory and they would make it in your fabric. I think it's like just so inspiring boy. I guess I love make my life difficult. <laughs> I look at different uh, objects a lot. It could be like anything like random that I really like, like it could be the color or the shape. It's very, you know, object and character based. Here is uh, one of our twist pieces. Uh, so we have it in dresses, skirts, tops, you know, we're, it's a piece that is evolving. And I think, um, yeah, it's kind of like a signature right now. The twist was something that I developed during my MA. I work with a lot of uh, draping, um, but I'm so into like textures, so that's how I kind of developed it. 
by uh, draping, but also like sewing to create these kind of twist bits. We also do felting with merino wool. And this piece here is from the MA collection, the first twist top. I don't know, I, th I think it's really important to try to be the best version of yourself as a person before, you know, being the best designer because you can see it in your work and what you stand for. It's not just about clothes, it's about who you are and how you can support and uplift your community. The part of my personality that was maybe drawn to sort of like conceptual side of fashion has been that I like need to draw from personal narrative. That's something, you know, each season that I usually know what I want to, to sort of like reflect on. Spring, summer 22 was domiciliary and I mean, I nannied for like 12 years overall. <laughs> I think I was just reflecting on that and thinking about sort of the both really intimate but also like formal place you have within a home as a domestic worker so i think for me like it was like a lot of research into sort of like domestic garments um aprons one thing that's new this season that we're working on is knit the work we've done before has been so stretchy but we've done it all with sort of these elasticated trims that we make um, with like strips of silk and elastic. These pieces were all based off sort of extra like barry rope tying from last season and then we've kind of continued them in different colorways. This season is some, I suppose for me, has a similar thing where I, um, I'm looking a lot at um, orchestral wear because the collection is beginning with sort of memories of my mother who's a cellist. She's very like emotionally connected when she plays. My mother has always been bugging me to make her a cello dress, so. She's getting a cello trouser. Probably the most important thing after clothes for me would probably be casting. What links with that, I suppose, is like actually designing into the people you're fitting for. I realized that it's important to explain to people that like when they don't fit garments, it's because there is a fit model somewhere and there is a sample size and garments are actually being constructed to fit a particular person. So when you don't fit something, it's not like all about you. I think people don't talk about how fashion is based on like, like patterns. So I feel for me, the most important thing is to try and offer a brand whose patterns are based on someone else. I got some funding for studio equipment. What I applied for was a mannequin. They make the mannequins like based off a combination of um, real body measurements and then they kind of like obviously make a more general size. Yeah, I got my, my, my full size mannequin. Genevieve is Gemini for sure. <laughs> and then um, we also use this cast. I think for me, I more use this cast and like say, other casts I take people's busts as like a beginning point for pattern cutting. So like to get shape, a new shape. But then of course I have real fittings with real people and then I can adapt shape and stuff um, based on that. I think it's quite shocking how luxury fashion is allowed to like just so openly discriminate. And it does have an incredibly negative impact on mental health. First of all, all of our families are involved. It used to be me that sourced all the textiles. My mom now does it like professionally. She's an employee that does it. Laura's mom does like our accounting, our cash was like more financial side. And Laura's sister does like our day-to-day -day, like accounting. I kind of handle production. Laura handles a little bit more of like all of those like documents. Cash management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of our classic um, carabiner skirts. This one in particular is made out of upcycled Bulgarian aprons. We basically cut them in half, repair them, and then we piece them together and pleat them, and we make these skirts. And we have a lot of different kind of var variations of them with different textiles. This one is kind of a different style, no carabiners, but this is pleated in a different way to kind of show the textile a bit more. So these are um, tapestries as well, um, old Bulgarian tapestries, which used to be, they're more wall hanging. They used to be kind of used as artwork. This is a like a bed cover. We've had them for a really long time, but yeah, it just worked out. really well in the style. This is like mm -hmm. 
more paired back like rose queen dresses. We have like a few of them that get more and more intense. But we wanted to make these like rose queen gowns because we're inspired by the Rose Festival, which has like a really over the top rose queen and it's really cool. It's like a rose queen competition. Every season we start with um, a like traditional reference, which is usually relating to like me or Emma, something personal, something in our heritage, something that we we relate to. I think it it's good because we are two people bring both our ideas together, so yeah. it works in that way, and it gives you lots of information, and we just really enjoy working that way. I think my biggest challenge is production. Definitely. Um, it's really hard. <laughs> um, and especially because I sort of develop a lot of techniques with my team that are kind of unconventional in terms of construction. It took me so long to find someone who can shear. That's great, found someone now. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely my biggest challenge. Financially, it's, it's very hard to, to have a brand, but there is pockets of money out there. How did you do that, if you don't mind? How did I? Yeah. I'm still broke. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but I am. I mean, any production takes a long time. I just, the, the problem is like to actually find someone who could like do it. Because most of the places, they just don't want to take anything complicated because they can get something easier. I mean, <laughs> in the beginning, when we graduated, we tried to have a brand for a year and pretty much nothing worked for us. It's Every okay. single thing was like a failure and it was so hard. Nothing really happened for a year, but it was just like staying in it and staying like, keep working, keep doing. It's really because we have each other. I think that I want to create a better space for people, invite more people that look like me and to kind of show them that it's possible, you know, like I, I don't come from money, for example, and I know that it's very hard as a black woman to exist in this industry. I just want to help change, you know, not one person can do all of it, but I feel like everyone can, you know, push the right direction for sure. We kind of always questioned, why do we need to add to this? And I think that yeah. if, like, that's why we always love special clothes and we want to make special clothes. And I think upcycling and recycling and using ethical fibers, having just a good ethical business is very important. And that's definitely where I feel like. Yeah, younger generations really understand that and really, like, focus on that. Yeah. People that are buying the clothes, people yeah. starting brands, I think just... Everyone is, is more aware and more open to like yeah. focusing on being sustainable. This is uh, the map bag. Um, it's made by ArtSense in Ghana, in Accra, and uh, that's an ongoing collaboration. And I think it's really important to remember, you know, how to be sustainable in the workforce. You know, so it's not just about the materials you're using. People always forget and still forget like who's in your team like how can we um, you know talk about mental health and how people are feeling and how they can become a better person and designer you know to be selling a really big size range to wholesalers that would probably be like the goal and not just a few pieces trying to encourage more people who don't typically have garments made for them to be able to buy like my brand and think it will take a while to sort of figure all that out. Yeah. I wish more people were open to talking about like the struggles between each other. I feel like the industry sometimes is... Yeah, is wants to talk about all the really good really stuff. The, all the parties and all the good stuff instead of, actually, this is really hard. People sometimes don't understand why things are so expensive and they just think like that design is like overcharged. I mean, I hope that maybe with my work, they would see how much work is in, in you know, in the process and et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you.